boys and girls, cats and dogs. This is an inclusive channel. And I have with me today, Gary, whom I found on Instagram. He has a fascinating Instagram page. And uh, his Instagram page is Gary Knits, Gary Rides, with underscores between all the four words. So tell us um, all about yourself. Um, my name is Gary Boston. I, uh, I'm living right now in uh, <clears throat> sunny uh, Southern California, but I uh, grew up in Texas and spent most of my adult life in, in New York City, um, where I had uh, my, my whole career was based in New York City. And then we moved out here. Um, my husband and I moved out here a few years ago to be closer to aging uh, parents um, as, uh, you know, happens. And uh, so we've been out here for, for a few years. And um, yeah, I keep busy. I'm sure we'll get into it, but I keep busy doing a lot of uh, knitting and writing as my uh, as my Instagram handle uh, suggests. So mm -hmm. that's, cool. that's, kind of, that's kind of the story. Yeah. So how long have you been knitting? So um, knitting, um, I've been knitting probably since about 2000. 2004 I actually um, well if we want to sound of music this and start at the very beginning um, I um, a very good place to start. Yes. I you know I had a pretty crafty childhood so my both my mom and her mom um, were crafters so my grandmother knit they both quilt um, when so we were kids uh, we did a lot of like I don't know, I, I assume it still exists, but needlepoint on plastic canvas and you made these sort of, you know, tissue box covers and, you know, all the placemats and things like that. So we did, it was, but it was, you know, big thread, big or yarn basically a needle. So it was easy for kids to do. So we did a lot of that. And then I kind of graduated up to counted cross stitch when I was sort of preteen and, and teenager. Um, and then went away to college and all that sort of dropped off the, the map. So, um, you know, we fast forward to about 2003, and um, I actually started with crochet. Um, the The first thing I, I was, my partner at the time was a big TV watcher, um, and I wasn't, but I wanted something to be able, to, and I'm, you know, notorious, you'll have, you can talk to my husband about it, but uh, needing to multitask. So just sitting and watching TV is not a thing that I'm prone to do. So I wanted to be able to do something with him, but wanted to actually be doing something that I found, you know, uh, useful or rewarding. And so uh, a friend of ours um, had, had started crocheting and suggested that. I was like, oh, you know, my grandmother crocheted and maybe I'll, you know, give that a shot. So the first thing I did was just a, you know, a single crocheted like sort of square potholder thing. Um, and, you know, at that point in time, um, the, you know, the, it, there was pre-ravelry and, you know, pre the sort of explosion in, in, in in fiber arts and the things that I was finding, I wasn't really interested in trying to do a big Afghan. And most of the crochet patterns I were find I was finding, you know, where it was a lot of granny square stuff and things that just I wasn't going to ever wear myself. And so um, I kind of shifted gears um, and picked up um, the Stitch and Bitch book by Camp Debbie Debbie Stoller, I think was her name. Um, but it was just a ba you know basic intro to, to knitting book and sort of picked that up and then that kind of launched me be knitting um and you know so i kind of went through the normal did a hat did a scarf you know did, did some more um some more things i was uh um living in new york at the time and a friend and i um discovered that we were both knitters and he approached so this is probably 2004 he approached um a woman who owned a knit shop uh, a yarn store in the east village um, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore called Knit New York and pitched the idea of doing a men's knitting night. Um, and she was like, sure, why not? And so for, you know, for about a year, we co-hosted a men's knitting night in this little yarn shop in the East Village. And, you know, we'd all bring beer and wine and whatever, and we'd sit around and, you know, and it grew, you know, we got to a point where there were like on a good night, you know, 10 or 12 of us. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. And I was at a point in my career at that point where I'd kind of taken a hiatus for a year and was doing some pro bono work. Um, and so I had a lot more free time. And so I knit a lot then. Um, and then um, things changed. I sort of got back on the career path and my free time dwindled and the kind of knitting, you know, I always, 
I would always have, um, usually, you know, someone had a baby and I would make them booties and a hat or a little, you know, kimono sweater or something like that. But never, never, it was really never something that I did sort of continuously through that, through that period of time um, until we moved out here. Um, so I would, all, and mostly what I worked on was hats because I love knitting hats and I love wearing hats. Um, so I did a lot of, of hat knitting in the meantime. Um, but it wasn't really until we moved out here um, that I picked it back up and sort of started pursuing it a little more um, aggressively. Um, and, um, you know, it was really, <laughs> it was really the, I'm sure you remember, but post the, the 2016 election, the sort of um, pussy hat um, explosion that sort of took over everything. Um, and as soon as people found out I was a knitter, sort of just kept requesting to it. So I probably that year just made and gave away about 60 of those. Um, so I was like wow. a, little, a little factory on, on, the, on the pink hats. Um, and that, you know, that kind of got me back into it really. I mean, I, I, I said, well, you know, I'm really enjoying this. I have a lot more free time now um, that we've moved out here. Um, okay. And then just started, kind of discovered Ravelry and all the things that that had available uh, available to me, and, and that's when I really started picking up uh, picking up the knitting um, again. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, actually, I think it's I think a lot of us um, men, especially, they they did some of it as a kid and enjoyed it, but then put it down and then picked it up again. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And as you know, I mean, it's. Um, I, I think about like when I was, you know, in the peak, peak of, of, of my work life, you know, just not having, you know, any free time to like, you know, really devote to it. Um, you know, I wish, I kind of wish now, now that I've really gotten back into it and started um, exploring different types of knitting and being a little more adventurous in terms of what I'm, you know, willing to try. Um, I kind of wish I had, had pursued it along along the way and, and sort of kept it up because I think it would, I would be you know much more advanced than I than I currently am. So, but but I'm glad I'm I'm able to uh, do a lot of it now. So, um, do you design as well? I don't. You know, I um, I uh, and we can we can talk about uh, sort of one of the things that I that, that I'm working on. I have never even considered it. There's so many great uh, designers out there, but it, um, I did just see. Uh, because I've started getting into um, shawl, shawls now, um, this uh, shawl knitting, and Stephen West was just um, had just has posted a new sort of tutorial thing, and, and was asking asking folks about what they might like to see in the next tutorial. And one of the things he suggested or threw out there was, you know, starting to design your own shawls, and that sort of like made me go, hmm, maybe you know, maybe somewhere down the road. But um, for now, there's just so much, there's just so many great designs out there that I feel like just sort of learning the different techniques and and playing with all of this amazing yarn which also did not exist when i first started knitting um you know there's just there's just so much uh, to, to pursue on the, on the, those fronts so yeah a big explosion in hand dyers uh, amazing you know i um w when the well i guess it was before the before technically the pandemic started, and I don't, I don't even know what motivated me to to do it, but I signed up probably or in early in 2020 for one of these Vogue knitting live online things where you can you can take classes, and then they have this marketplace where different you know different vendors sort of pitch their you know pitch their products, and they offer you a discount and, and whatever. Um, and I, I think I want was trying to learn some new techniques, and so I said oh, I'll take take some classes, and then I had access to all of these these vendors. And just the these indie dyers just blew my mind. Just how many of them were out there, and you know all of these people that were kind of in you know in in their kitchens and, and making this this gorgeous um, gorgeous yarn. I, I I will say that it did lead to a bit of an explosion on the purchasing side <laughs> on my end, where my my yarn stash you know grew from one little plastic tub to several uh, plastic tubs, and now taken over a, a closet. But I still at Watching. You sure, it's a closet and not a whole room. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, but I do, I do, I do. You know, look at uh, watch. You know, some of the podcasters. You know, that have you know the walls of yarn behind them, and I, you know, I would say, well, I'm not, I'm not there yet, not quite yet. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been fantastic to to sort of discover all of these, um, you know, yarns. And and you know, like like I said, when when I first started, I was 
mainly doing hats, mainly working in worsted weight yarn. So fingering and all the, these, you know, the, the self-striping sock yarns and things like that just didn't exist back then. And it's just been a lot of fun to, to play around with that stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I got back into it, I was, I was mainly worsted, almost all budget yarn. If I ran across, if I bought something uh, that was posh yarn, because usually it's because I like the color, then I was either afraid to do, to use it right. or um, didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I still, uh, well, not from those days, but I have posh yarn now that I'm afraid to use. And I just have to, what I need to do um, is listen to the yarn. Yeah. Is, I, always, is, I, I always get a little scared when I, you know, I, you know, and this is probably again, why I sort of gravitated towards hats is whenever I'd find a, an expensive yarn that I loved, I was scared to buy too little of it because I was like, what if I start making this, that scarf and I run out and then, you know, what I'm going to do. So I'm like, I always sort of said, well, at least I can make a cashmere hat out of this, you know, this beautiful, you know, this thing of cashmere yarn, which is what I ended up uh, doing because, you know, at that time I didn't have the budget to buy a sweater's quantity of, uh, um, you know, super fancy yarn. So, yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. Now, and well, as time goes by, I have, there are more and more of those budget yarns that I just don't want to use again. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Uh, and more and more of the nice ones that I do. Yeah. I have, I, 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 I found that there's, I mean, there's that, that sort of in between, um, you know, like I, I know you have talked before with, with folks about, you know, like knit pits. Like I think some of their, like the sort of the acrylics that they do are much, much better than at least the acrylics that I inherited from my grandmother from the 70s, which, you know, were squeaky. The kind of yarn that gives acrylic a bad name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think that uh, that is improved. Yeah. And the way that they're, you know, able to sort of blend some, you know, blend some wool in with an acrylic to mm -hmm. sort of make a, a little nicer touch to the to the yarn so yeah actually i like a, a nice soft touch acrylic and some of those really can be budget yarns yeah um i just don't like a harsh touch yeah. and you know that for some purposes especially for babies you want oh, sure. something that's synthetic so that it's washable well and i one of the things that really got me um ramping up my production is i i decided a couple years ago that um for all of the young people in our in our lives, so friends and you know ne nieces and nephews, as they graduated from high school, what I was going to do is for graduation was make them a dorm blanket for their dorm room, and um, you know, for that you you want something that you know a college kid can throw in the you know throw in the wash and not have to you know try to worry about hand washing and and, and all that stuff. And so there's some great there's some great products out there for easy care and, and stuff like yeah. that. I still have one of those dorm blankets that my grandmother made for me when I, she crocheted it. And it was uh, uh, um, when I started college in 1980. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that was really the, that was really the motivation. Cause I have, um, you know, one of my most treasured possessions is a, um, my, my grandmother knit us all stuff when we were kids. And I have a great, great sort of scrappy grand, granny square Afghan that she made me when I was a, a kid. But one of the, one of the things that I, I treasure is um, a blanket um, that's knit um, in horrible acrylic yarn from, from Kmart because we still had the, the skeins. And she got, she started it in the 70s and then for whatever reason put it down. And as she aged, she couldn't figure out the pattern any longer. And so when I part started knitting and, and I had gone to her house and she was giving me all her old knit, knitting needles and, and stuff like that. And we found in a drawer, like in a plastic bag, this, you know, sort of half finished, afghan but all of the yarn still there and she said well if you can fit it you know if you can figure it out the pattern um you know see if you can you can finish it and so i was able to finish it and um you know, it was just sort of having something like that um that i thought you know i don't know how many moms are out there you know crocheting and, and knitting things for their, their kids anymore so if i can be the guy who can send them off to college with something handmade then hopefully mm -hmm. you know they'll be able to have for the the rest of your life so that's been a fun you know, and I try to either work with the mom or if if the kid is interested, um, kind of work with them on kind of what they would like to see in it. So, you know, some of them want it in the school colors of where they're going to college. You know, other people, other ones have, you know, their favorite colors or they're sort of 
you know, they don't want a traditional design, they want something more abstract. And so that's been, it's been a fun kind of a project to, to, to work on. That sounds like fun. Yeah. yeah. I would and, love that. And as, as a result of sort of launching into that, um, I went back to crochet. So I had picked up a lot, you know, picked up over the years, picked up a crochet hook and tried to sort of get back into it and could never make heads or tails of, of how the, the structure of it, the counting used to just drive me crazy. I would end up with, you know, always adding or subtracting and end up with a zigzag, you know, square that it was supposed to be a square, but it was wider and, and narrower in places. And so finally, uh, I said, you know, I know it works up faster. I know there are a lot of designs, especially for blankets that are great in crochet, and I want to get this done. So I um, found a local yarn store here um, and went down there and took took lessons. And so I finally have uh, gotten, I'm still not as, not nearly as strong a crocheter as I am a, a knitter, but it is at least in the wheelhouse now, so. If you'd like, I will email you a transcription of a, a blanket tutorial that oh. I wrote up um, that's a really, really, well, actually I have one right here. Uh, it's really, really easy to do. Oh, wow. And um, it looks harder than it is. It looks impressive and you can do it in any yarn, any, um, you know, colors. It, it works with solids. It works uh, especially well with self-striping. You can uh -huh. make it as big as you want. Oh, wow. Um, so that yeah, I'll, cool. I'll email you that transcription. Yeah, that um, yeah I, I was going to, um, uh, the guy who did the tutorial, um, wouldn't let me, um, um, uh, do anything with the transcription because he said the design was not his and there had already been enough confusion because people thought the design was his because he did the tutorial but he yeah. just he just did his based on having seen a picture of oh. something that was done probably in the 50s or 60s right right so he didn't want any more drama yeah but uh that would, that you know great I, just between I, you and me, we can do this. <laughs> I especially like, I especially like uh, blankets and, and crochet because it just it does it just moves so much faster. I mean, you you just get you know so much more fabric for 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 an hour. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I you know and I love all of the different motifs, the the sort of granny square type type motifs. It's just a lot of a lot of fun. So I always try to, um, not always successfully, but I, I'm really trying to keep at least one of my projects as a crochet project, just so I don't lose that sort of muscle memory of, of remembering how to, how to, how to do it also. Yeah. Because I tend, I tend to have, you know, sweet spot is like four or five projects going at any, any moment in, in time. So. Uh, and I have a box of UFOs too. <laughs> I've, I've tried to be, I've tried, I, I used to, I used to be a serial like starter. So I would like start something and then I sort of like, okay, I get how this works. And then I'm just kind of like move on to the next one and try to figure, you know, okay, a new technique, yeah. and new, you know, play with a new yarn. But I, I've really tried to be a little more disciplined and, and have, you know, only four or five going at uh, any point in time. But, you know, you, what you want to have, or at least I want to have, um, you know, something that requires a little more concentration, something that I can sit and watch TV and sort of mindlessly, you know, mindlessly work on. Um, and so. Yeah, you know, there are some things that I can work on. I, uh, you know, this blanket I could be doing while we were sitting here and talking. I have another one that I'm working on that I couldn't do while I'm sitting here talking because it does take more focus. Right. Um, but, um, oh, I was um, going back through your Instagram just before and I saw uh, a post that you did recently proposing a knit along slash crochet along for shawls for fundraising yep. or um, for, yeah. for the AIDS fundraising work that you do. Yeah. So tell so us that, about that. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I guess, um, so the AIDS, the AIDS life cycle is the, the fundraiser that I, that I um, was, um, was talking about, which is a 545 mile uh, bike ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles every year. Mm -hmm. uh, about about 3000 people do it and it raises money for, um, the Los Angeles LGBT Center and the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. Um, and I got started, we can talk about my past history with uh, charity bike rides, but the 
I did my a friend of mine had joined the board of uh, San Francisco AIDS Foundation. She's not a cyclist, but she'd known I had done a bunch of these rides back when I was when I was younger, um, and said, "Well, you know, as a board member, I feel like I should do it. Would you, you know, be willing to dust off your bike and and try it again?" And so so I did. I had a fantastic time, and so kind of committed then that I would do it ten more times with the goal of over those eleven years trying to raise two hundred thousand dollars for. Um, AIDS life cycle. Um, so I've uh, continued it the last couple of years. They haven't had the actual ride, but they've had events. So I've been able to ride the 545 miles the week of the ride and continue to raise money. And, um, you know, as I was, as I'm doing it, I kind of set up this, this Instagram account to sort of, um, originally it was sort of just about my, my training for the, for the AIDS life cycle. Um, and then as I started knitting more, I started putting more knitting pictures in there and just after i finished the ride this year i was like you know it'd be really fun to try to come up with a way to combine these two things that i love and am passionate about into you know to one thing and i had have had a couple of ideas i think i'm going to do um do some sort of like knitting sort of things of appreciation for people who are donors um have been donors to the to the ride but i thought why not try to do a knit along crochet along um, cause I always have fun doing those. I've done several with, with, through different podcasts, um, and try to figure out a way to make it a, a fundraiser. And so I kind of sat with the idea for, for a while and then just finally put out that post, just sort of like, someone's going to be able to figure out how we can make this happen. I'm just going to throw it out there and see, see what happens. Well, I posted it on Instagram and then I'm, I'm part of a, a knitting group in Facebook called uh, knitters got a knit, which is co-run by Arena Shah, or Char. I don't know if you know her, but she has a Fiber Chats uh, is her, um, she has a podcast, which is really great. But anyway, it kind of blew up overnight. And I, mm -hmm. um, Adela at Lola Bean Yarn Company and uh, the Knit More Girls podcast shared it. And so all of a sudden, where I was hoping to maybe find one designer who would say like, oh yeah, you know, I'll I'll help with the with the design and we can do do this had you know dozens of people come back to me um and then started talking to a bunch of different people who said well why if you're getting this great response why just do this this one cow mal you know whatever you want to call it um why not try to do a series of them over the course of the year and, and sort of have a continuous you know fundraiser um happening so that is and this i i sort of briefly uh post about it but so this will be the first time that it's really you know getting getting out there but that's what we're going to plan to do is so the original plan was to do a knit along and crochet along in sort of the April, May uh, time period. And we're still going to do that. Um, the, uh, just to be fair to the, the, the folks that responded to me, kind of the first couple of people that responded to me, we're, we're working, I'm working with them and we're going to have that uh, happening, but um, I'm going to try to expand it now and maybe starting as soon as sometime in September may not all be shawls, um, but we're, um, going to try to every couple months do one of these um, and, um, you know, try to, a lot of the designers were kind of new designers. And so it'd be, I thought it'd be fun to sort of like help some new de designers get, uh, get some stuff out there and, um, to, you know, raise a little money for, uh, for the age ride. Yeah. I, I commented um, just as soon as I saw the post, but I felt like I was late to the party because I, I would love no. to volunteer. Well, and I, saw, I, saw, I saw your response this morning and I said, I am absolutely going to hit you up because there's been a lot of, um, a lot of interest on the, the knitting side, but um, I'd love to be always, maybe not every single time, maybe we'll alternate, but a couple of times to do a joint, um, a joint thing. So I will definitely follow up with you and uh, I'd love to, to do that. But also I saw at least one person volunteering uh, to coordinate um, the sort of patterned and yarn kits, putting those together. And if you could yeah. do that and sell those at a premium, that would be an amazing fundraising device. Yeah, I, it's it's interesting because, you know... Especially if you could get like a yarn vendor to um, give you a substantial discount or even a donation. Right. How cool that, would that be? That would be, that would be amazing. We... we hmm. A couple of the, the the yarn dyers have reached out and said they would be willing to to or would like to try to help out however they can. And this is kind of you know it's, it's a little different than how a normal make make along 
you know, would work because there's this money aspect of the fundraising aspect to it that we're trying to kind of negotiate. And I, and I said from the beginning, my, you know, my, my only two real goals were, you know, to make a little money, but for the, for the charities, but to have fun. And I wanted to make sure that any of the vendors, whether, whether it was a designer or a yarn dyer, we're getting fully compensated because, you know, I, I don't want, um, I know people are, are very generous, but I, you know, at the same time it's labor and I want to make sure that your the, the designers are able to, to make, you know, are not giving away their stuff for free. Um, and so we're, we're each, you know, each, I think each designer is going to work a little differently, whether it's um, I did a little poll and it seems like the sweet spot um, for, for people who want to, to participate is kind of in the five to seven dollar range, what they're kind of willing to pay above and beyond the cost of a uh, of a pattern as a sort of a charitable donation. So we're we're kind of figuring out as we go how the best and sort of most seamless way to to sort of make it happen. But I'm I'm really um, I'm really excited. It was I was blown away by the the response. And you know, like I said, I, I my plan is to have eight more of these rides to do. Um, and so if it's something that we can kind of get, test the waters this year and see how it works and kind of iron out the kinks and we can con continue to do it for, you know, the next few years, I think it'd be great. I mean, I think it'll be, and it doesn't, you know, it's, uh, I said shawls just because <laughs> that was what I was interested in. And those seem to be really popular right now in terms of uh, middle longs. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I know the, the fiber hustle guys have been doing the vertices United or Unite, um, Stephen Westshaw, Max from uh, uh, Le Garçon is doing his new design. And, and so it seems like- I really, love them. Is, aren't they great? Yes. Have you, have you seen that new shawl of his, the, um, the Opus shawl? It is stunning. I don't know whether I have. Um, uh, he's, he's just kicking off a, uh, a make along. It almost looks woven. It, it's sort of a grid grid pattern, but it's, it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, yes. That might be a, a picture that I've seen floating around that's just beautiful. Yeah, I, I love watching their um, YouTube channel. They haven't posted much lately, have they? They just did one just last week, I think. They just, they, they, they'd had oh, a, I'll have to look. Yeah. They had a fire. They had a fire in their building. Oh, no. Um, that had, had, caused them to have to like you know wash all their yarn and and do all this stuff and so it, it's kind of delayed stuff but uh, everything seems oh, well. yeah, but, oh, yeah, I, so, I, uh, yeah i'm uh um yeah so stay tuned i think the first big i'm and we're working on some last things but my plan is to be able to announce the first make along here in a in a bit um and then assuming that goes well um, my plan would be to maybe kick one off right after new year's so kind of let everyone have the november december because there's all sorts of holiday you know make-alongs and the indie thing that happens on ravelry and and stuff mm -hmm. going on i didn't want to you know i didn't want to crowd into that space but maybe start one off at the beginning of the year then do one in the spring and then the ride every year runs early june and so i thought maybe then to kind of finish it off with which also coincides with pride month to do sort of a Post ride pride um, uh, one in, in the in the um, sort of early summer. So, how cool would it be to be able to sell kits for people to give as Christmas gifts? Yeah, if that. If yeah, we, I mean, we could talk for days about this um, just by itself, and yeah. I, I would actually like to talk at length with you offline. Yeah, I'd love I'd love that to. I mean, like I, I said, you know. This is all, it's all new and it's all the brainstorming has been real. I mean, the, if I hadn't had a conversation with one of the designers about doing this as a sort of multiple series, it would, you know, it would have never crossed my mind um, just mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I had a very sort of small idea about just like doing one and, and done, but it um, it's kind of uh, blown up since then. So I'd, yeah, I'd love to have an offline conversation about how maybe to put together kits, which would be great. Um, and yeah, work with, I mean, there's so like, like we said, there's so many great indie dyers out there, um, that it could be a lot of, uh, a lot of fun to, mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. And you could actually, you could make the kits in different price ranges too, using say, um, some less expensive yarns that are still nice to the touch mm -hmm. and some really nice yarns, um, 
have either choice for a particular pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Kind um, of have different um, options for, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. And, and, um, oh, this could be fun. Yeah. This, yeah. Be, uh, I, I would, yeah, we must talk about this because I would okay. love to be involved and help you in any way that I can. That'd be great. Yeah. It's been, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of adding another dimension to you know to two things that I they that I already um, really enjoyed and and interestingly in that from that original post I also met another guy who is an AIDS life cycle participant and also a knitter so that that was kind of cool as as well really? oh, yeah. he, oh, he's, yeah. he, I don't think he's I don't think he's ridden the ride he was signed up and training to do the 2020 ride and then that the, oh. the official ride got canceled and so it was it became an at-home ride um but so the the ride for next year has been is on um and signups signups begin on the 18th so just five days okay. yeah um, so did, did now we, when you were in new york did you do the new york boston ride so that's yeah so that's how i got started in 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 these these uh age life cycle or the age rides back then they called them the age rides so if woman that I used to work with, um, she was, I think she was a cyclist. And, and when the first, they first did the first Boston, New York ride, and it was a big deal, you know, the riding down the streets of, in, in New York. And she had seen that and said, oh, you know, would you be interested in, in doing this? I hadn't ridden a bike since I was a kid. Um, but she, for, for whatever, she convinced me. And so the next year she and I, we trained and we did the Boston, New York ride. And from then it just sort of, um, took off. So I did that ride. Um, I think I rode it three times and then I was on the crew one year and I met a ton of um, people that are still dear friends of mine doing that, mm -hmm. uh, doing those rides. And so we ended up doing as, you know, they expanded those kind of across the country. So there was Chicago Twin Cities, there was a DC mm -hmm. one, and then they expanded it. And so they had these AIDS vaccine rides where they were funding research for, for an AIDS vaccine. So I did, um, rode across Texas twice, and then, wow. then they did, I did the that first. That is a bit <laughs> of a schlep. Well, I, it was, you know, I, I grew up in Texas. I grew up on a farm in, in, uh, or in a farming community in North Texas. And so it was kind of, you know, at that point it was just like, I kind of felt like, oh, that'll be great. I'll let it go home. And it was, it was a really, the first year it went from Austin to Houston and then up to Dallas. And then the second year it just went from Austin to Dallas maybe. Um, but I did that twice and it was really, it was really great. Um, cause it was a, it was one of the last expansion rides they did before that whole operation kind of, kind of shut down. And so, the, but the rides were very, very small relative to the, how big the Boston, New York ride was. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really intimate little, you know, I, there were probably seven, 700 people, but it was a small, small group. And we just had a great, uh, a great time doing those two. And then in 99, I did the first. Uh, Alaska AIDS vaccine ride, which was uh, wow, Alaska seven days. It was it was about the same as the California ride. It was like seven days, I think, just over six hundred miles, um, and it was brutal. It was they they tried to time it so it was supposed to be the you know the warmest part of the year, but we get we got hit with snow and rain and sleet. They had to call like the state national guard in to like rescue a bunch of people who had gotten sort of like stranded at a, at a pit stop and couldn't ride anymore. And it was just a really grueling, um, a grueling ride. And the weather was miserable until the very last day. And then, it, and then it was beautiful. Um, but that basically ended, <laughs> ended my, my age ride career. Cause I, I got, got home from that ride, put the bike in the, the storage bin in my apartment building and never, you know, never took it out again until, uh, 2019, when my friend asked me about doing the the cal ride out here in California, so mm. um, it you know it was uh, I, I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed it, and the, the California ride is just it's a really great experience. You know, the 3,000 people um, they call it the love bubble because it's just this week of like everybody taking care of each other and just a lot of great you know vibes, and it's just they just make it a lot of uh, really fun. And you kind of almost forget that you're on this sort of grueling 545 mile, you know, uh, bike ride because it, it's so well, so well put together and, you know, it raises a ton of money, um, for these, these two charities, which, you know, it's been top these last two years because as the ride has gone from a big produced event to doing it at home, the fundraising has dropped off 
dramatically. So they don't have the cost to produce it, but still, um, you know, these are these are frontline, you know, frontline healthcare services for a lot of a lot of people in the the communities. Mm-hmm. It's been a real a real tough couple of years. So I'm I'm glad I'm really glad that not just personally that it's going to be fun for me to get out and do the ride again next year, but they're going to be able to ramp up their fundraising and start to you know hopefully you know re restart some of the programs that they may have had to. And a lot of people don't realize that HIV is not gone. No, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not, and um, it's uh, um, you know still new cases are you know the, I think one of the San Francisco Aid Foundation's sort of big picture goals is to get to zero new cases in in the city of uh, of San Francisco, and they made a lot of mm-hmm. headway in that in that in that um, effort, but they're you know it's not there yet, so there's still a lot of work to be done. Both on the prevent, prevention side and on the treatment side, um, in terms of um, the work they're doing. So, yeah, just, yeah. Um, and I've always, I've always thought that you know the social services side is so important because um, you know the the well there is of course the the providing the medical care, but also also the everything that goes into um, the social services side, even if it's just meals, yep. if it's a social outlet. Um, I used to live within walking distance of what they now call the Geffen Center in, mm. in Chelsea. Because um, I, w- I was in the New York City area for like oh. 27 years. Okay. Oh, yeah. I wish we had known each other then. <laughs> we were there the exact same time. So Yeah, I was there until 2018. Oh, okay. But... Um, um, yeah, uh, and and um, I spent an awful lot of time at the center on Thirteenth Street, and I mm-hmm. I have a very strong memory of just hanging out there, just just hanging out before a meeting, um, and they were doing um, I think it was a recruiting night for um, that year's uh, New York to Boston ride, mm-hmm. and they showed a video. <laughs> Yeah, like not a not a not a dry eye. You know that they do a great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's. I mean, I knew it was meant to be manipulative, but I willingly was manipulated. And, oh, and yes, absolutely. You know, at that time, I did not cry nearly as easily as I do now. Now I cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, it's it is it's it's a very it's a very powerful experience and even now having done it i don't know how many this is going to be but you know 10 10 11 11 mm-hmm. times that that opening ceremony and they they do this sort of like um well if you but they at the opening ceremonies they have these sort of riderless bikes that they bring down the like middle of the aisle where you know everyone and you know and it it is it is just Every single time you, you see it, it is it is as powerful as the first time, um, and then just you know it just I don't know it's it's like you know you're out there with three thousand people that you know you, you don't know most of them but you really have this amazing sense of family and I think that you know especially with everything that's going on and how sort of divisive everything seems to have a week, uh, the week of your life where it is just this feeling of everybody's taking care of each other and you're all sort of working together for, you know, a goal and it's a big challenge and, you know, not everyone's going to make it, you know, every day to, you know, on their own, but there's going to be someone there to kind of help them. It's just a really, uh, it's just a really amazing, um, yeah. amazing event to, to, to be a part of. So, um, yeah. you don't have to ride. That's the thing. at some point, what? I'm not going to be able to ride. At some point, I'm not going to be able to ride anymore, but I can uh-huh. still crew, you know, you can be roadies and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Back yeah, then. yeah. Back then, I, uh, well, at that time, I was like very, very heavy, so I would not have been able to do it, and didn't have a bike or any money. And um, nowadays, I'm not. I probably couldn't. I don't really have the strength to do it. Yeah. I don't even know what they do in the southeast, whether there is an equivalent. I you remember know, I, a number. Hmm? Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I think a, a number of in in the collapse. <laughs> of the 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 old Tanqueray age rights because Tanqueray Gin, <laughs> ironically enough, was a sponsor of the thing. And the a lot of little regional rides kind of cropped up and, and people tried to to um to kind of reproduce it. 
Um, I think California, there, there's now another one that they now they do in, in New York. I don't think it goes to Boston anymore, but they, there is like a three day ride that, that does happen in, in New York. Um, but the California one has continued to be, you know, as big of a deal as it was back in the back in the day. So mm-hmm. I do recall there was a reading a number of years ago, something about accusations of, of like financial mismanagement and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I think the, the issue that always sort of followed those initial rides was it was produced by a for-profit company and so they managed the whole affair and then they took a profit and then whatever was left went to the, um, to the recipients. And so there was always this concern that, you know, for the dollars that got raised, the fraction of it that ended up going back into the recipients, you know, coffers uh, was low relative to other fundraising models. Um, You know, I I think at some point it became a a question of, you know, volume versus percentage. So you could raise a lot more money because you had a professional group sort of running these things and were able to, you know, put on these things at big scale, but then the percentage got cut because it was a, a, a cut being taken out of it so it was it was a different model you know ultimately um it collapsed and didn't work because i think that that sort of followed it around and now you know the, the that's what's cropped up in this place of the the um beneficiaries kind of running at them on themselves and the ones in california um sort of have the scale to kind of make it you know make it work mm-hmm. get it done. Um, yeah that's uh, and it, they're always going to be naysayers um, yeah, and I mean, I think there were there were some fair criticisms. I think it was an untested way of of raising money, um, and you know, I, I don't think it's any, you know, in some ways, it's no different than you know the American Heart Association paying a fundraiser to go out and fundraise, you know, for them. They're gonna, you know, they're, they're basically paying, you know, paying someone you know, to do it, and they're only gonna get a fraction of of what they what gets raised. But um, and it, it's. I compare it to like when I was in, I studied music in school and I used to hear people who came from like small town country churches saying that a church musician should never, ever be paid, should just be working, uh, you know, volunteering. And they would even say that a pastor, a, 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 an ordained minister should not be paid. Should right. be, And, you know, I'm going, nobody works for free. Right. I certainly don't sing for free. Well, right. I don't sing anymore, but I didn't sing for free. But um, yeah, no, and it gets back to the whole, you know, kind of why one of my sort of the things that I really wanted to make sure happened if this these make alongs happen was that we made sure the designers got paid because I I get that that's you know that's how you know make a living or make part of the living and and continue can continue to be able to do their design work is by getting getting paid. So I just wanted to. You know, well, let's work together to sell yeah. hundreds of my patterns then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, everybody <laughs> wins. Everybody wins. Um, yeah, be, yeah. Be, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, you know, it's been it's just just from having the people reach out to me for no other more selfish reasons is discovering a bunch of new designers that you know I you know had not yet seen their work and, and as as they approached me, sort of digging into the thing, and I'm like, oh, I you know add that to my Ravelry queue and. Uh, do you know there's another thing we could talk about because I'm compiling a pattern ebook to benefit the Hunger Project okay. that I want to sell on Amazon just to Ooh. raise money for the Hunger yep. Project. Um, and I've got some some pretty notable crochet designers already, but you know, um, if I, I if it's funny it's funny you should mention it because someone did one of the one of the designers that reached out to me mentioned um you know if you if we started if i started doing this as a series and could get the designers you know on board and we that's the thing where i'd have we just have to figure out how how it worked was to compile as the thing goes on you know sort of like a book of the designs that were done and then you could continue to sell that you know down the road or or whatever i think that's a great idea i think that that would be a great idea to benefit the um the the california ride um, and I would love to meet a lot of the designers that you know that I don't. Yeah. And talk to them about about my project as well. Sure. That'd be um, great. 
because you know the yarn community is full of really really big hearted and generous people uh, that's what I, that's what i quickly you know quickly learned just just how you know people were um you know jumping in to sort of help mm -hmm. with with designs help with ideas just sort of brainstorming <laughs> how you know how we could uh, how we could make it work so it's been really um it's been really amazing to see and um it's uh you know i knew i knew it was a great community because i you know I've, I've sort of been a part of it through different podcasts and things like that um they kind of have seen especially you know since when i first started and when you know versus walking into a yarn store and <laughs> I remember the one of the first times I walked into a yard store in New York and I was I can't remember what I was I was trying to to make, but I was I was asking a question about like, well, um, you know, I'm looking for for this or that. And the 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 clerk was like, Well, you know, why don't you tell your why don't you tell your wife or girlfriend to come in and we can discuss with her like what it what exactly it is that she needs or whatever. And I was just like, Are you serious? Like <laughs> You know, one time my ex and I were, were here in Wilmington visiting and we stopped at a local yarn shop here and um, there were some very nice old ladies coming out of the shop and they were just amazed to see men going into the shop. We used to, I, when we did the, when we did the men's, the knit night at Knit New York, because, you know, it sat, it sat there on, it was on 14th and I think first or second kind of kind of just off the corner and it had these big plate glass windows in you know in front and you kind of walk down uh into the store and the store was closed when we did it but we you know we were in there and the people that would just like sort of stand at the window and kind of gawk at like all of these guys you know in our in, our, in their knitting um it, it was really it was quite funny and in fact one night um someone stopped in was from a japanese news station and said oh can we come back next week with a camera and like film <laughs> film you guys and so wow. they, you know, you know, they came back and they you know they did some sort of you know news story on you know these crazy male new yorkers who are you know knitting so back in you know probably 2004 2005 so now my ex picked up knitting before i picked up crochet again and he um well I like to tell this story. I he picked it up because I gave him a beginner's kit because he was doing another hobby that sort of annoyed me. So, <laughs> but he quickly became an expert, and we would get on Metro North because we were living in in Westchester. We would get on Metro North, and and I had the best time watching other people watch him knit. Right, it was so funny and. I don't knit. Knitting is a mystery to me. I'm fine right. with crochet because there's enough still to learn with crochet. There's a ton still to learn with crochet. But um, I would be sitting like in a meeting somewhere or on the train or in a coffee shop and, um, and crocheting away. And someone would say, I've never seen a man knitting before. And I would say, well, you still have it because this is crochet. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah my, my my husband who, who i he he always referred to it as your sewing he's like are you are you going to be working on your sewing i'm like it's not sewing um but it's funny because he just during the pandemic he, he he was like do you think you could like teach me how to to knit and so he's 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 now recently started which to me is great just because i love seeing him you know do it but also now sort of justifies the increase in stash so i have a, I have a, a, a justification to continue to buy more <laughs> very wise yeah, yeah, yeah. so there but it, it's been fun yeah. it's been fun to kind of watch him you know get started and you know sort of deal go through the the learning process and um he's, he's, he's getting the hang of it it's cool have you been following tom daly and you know, his I, knitting and crochet I followed him for a couple of years, or when he, when he started a couple of years ago, I think, and someone someone pointed out to me. So I had sort of been following him along on his um, on his fiber journey. But it's just great to see, you know, it sort of explode all across. I mean, the number of people who have sent me the pictures has been um, pretty amazing. But yeah, he's he's adorable. And did you see that photoshopped picture where he was sitting? like probably between rounds of dives or something, sitting there in his Speedo, knitting something and 
because of Photoshop, he was knitting something quite yeah. inappropriate. I, 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 I saw that. I was like, what is Because I said, I've seen this picture before, and it was, he was working on like either that, the, the white cardigan that he worked on. I was like, oh, he's me. Uh -huh. Come on. Ah. <laughs> find something better, better to do. But yeah, he, <laughs> and, I love, and I love that he's, um, you know, using that platform that he has. And so the, these knitted things, he then donates to charity auctions and is able to raise a ton of money for, you know, the, the various charities that are important. Um, yeah. So kudos to him for, you know. As soon as it. I found out he knits and crochets, which is many months before the Olympics, I, I tried to, I, I reached out and tried to get him for my interview series, but you know, he's a little busy, so I'm yeah. not surprised yeah. I haven't heard back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it's great. And I, you know, if, it, if he, you know, if he can, uh, Get a few more guys involved uh, knitting. I think it, it's it's helpful for everyone, just because you know the more the more I think the more guys that that do it, the the better patterns that are going to come out of it. In terms of like you know, I, I still sort of get frustrated that there's there's not a lot of, I mean, there's a lot more than there used to be, but um, you know, sort of things designed specifically for men that are you know things that did I that aren't these sort of like super traditional kind of you know, argyle actually. Sweater. Recently, I did a, a, a Topic Tuesday, which uh, is a live stream that I do every Tuesday, and right. it starts out with a topic. It doesn't always <laughs> stick to topics. It spirals from there, yeah. Yeah, sort of like this conversation. <laughs> but, um, but the topic was um, 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 designers for menswear. And there are some really great ones out there. I only know the crochet ones, but people were calling out um, knitwear designers for men as well. Yeah. And there's, so, there's, I mean, it is, you know, way more than there were than when, when I first, yeah. um, first, first started, um, when I first started knitting. So there's, and there's just a ton, there's a ton more men designing and I think that's helpful. Um, and there's just been some great, um, some great uh, men's more, Sort of more wearable stuff for for men both. I I haven't I haven't exactly. been on the crochet side, so that's good to good to hear as well. Because I I've never I haven't tried to crochet a garment yet. I mean I've done a hat, and I've done a shawl, but I've never I've never like I'm not there on on like trying to do a sweater or or something like that. Um, I actually have a sweater uh, that I need to piece together and finish writing up and present as a pattern hmm. that um um. I've got another one that I was working on for a long time, and I called it the sweater that would not die. Um, um, and I put it aside, and I'll pick it up again. But uh, this other one is a cardigan. Um, and I like it better than the sweater that would not die. Um, so it's, uh, oh, it'll be out. I hope I can get it out this month. I'm trying to do a certain number of patterns every month. Wow. That's... But, um, it's, it is. it's impressive. I, I, when, as, I, as I go through, you know, I'm, I'm starting to work on more complicated things. I, I knit, mm -hmm. my first, knit my first sweater just this past year. Um, I saw the picture of your yeah. husband wearing that sweater. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, I, it was it, very it, nice. It, it, I, I'm very happy. He's, he's thrilled. You know, one of the downsides of living in California, you don't really need sweaters very often. Um, and so the, the motivation to, to, to knit, Spend the time to knit a sweater that I'm never going to wear are, are fairly low, but um, yeah, and I think I think I so it's it's called the Little Wave um, sweater. Um, it was a Brooklyn tweed pattern. Uh, Gundren Johnston, I think, was the the designer. Um, Brooklyn it's, tweed it, has great yarns, don't they, they? Yeah, and I used I used you know it was one of those where I the pattern called for their yarn. I've always been I it was one of those sort of dream yarns that I. You know, you, you look at their lookbooks and everything just looks so luscious and dreamy. And so I, I sort of like wanted to buy the yarns, but it wasn't one of those things that I was like, I'm just going to buy a bunch of it and see what I can, you know, do. Because, it, it, you know, it's, it's not cheap yarn. Um, and so I said, he asked me, could you knit me a sweater? And he kind of picked it out. And so I said, well, this is it. I'm going to use the, you know, the, the recommended yarn. Um, and it's great. It, it, um, it was a great pattern. Um, a little more complicated, um, a little more challenging than maybe I should have chosen for my um, my first go on a sweater. So you know, it's it has sort of a I wouldn't call it a cable. It's like a two two row cable, but it has a 
a winding cable, uh, a cable pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, chose to do it in a charcoal gray. So the pattern's really hard to see. And I, I, I laughed when I finally finished it for him. I said, you know, I, I probably knit this sweater three times now because I've, what was that? This oh, is a crochet hook with a, uh, um, it's like a, a, an acrylic tip that lights wow. up. I wow. mean, I like this series of hooks uh, simply because they the handle feels great in my uh -huh. hand, but they're great when I work with dark yarns too. I don't know that there's a knitting needle equivalent to that, but <laughs> it's, I mean, I just, I've just gotten a very, you know, bright light and, you know, it, it just became one of those things that that was a project where I couldn't sit and watch TV. It was, um, and, but I did, I did, you know, I, um, it was the first time I ever finally buckled down and learned how to read a chart for knitting and understood why people use them because of how to you know, sort of read it and kind of read your knitting. So it was, it was a, it was a great learning process. I think the end product, um, turned out, turned out great. He, uh, he really likes it. I don't know when he's ever going to wear it because it's a big, you know, it's a heavy worsted weight, you know, chunky kind of cardigan, but, um, you know, you can take it on uh, on trips up north. If we, if we ever get uh, to travel again, maybe we'll go somewhere cold. So yeah, yeah. No. Well, you said your family's in Texas, and his uh, family is there apparently, right? My yeah. subsequent to us moving out here, my folks moved out here as well. So now we're all oh okay all out here um, and um, aging in place together. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I came back to North Carolina is because my uh, this is where. My family is. And, yeah. Uh, when a lot of things required big changes in New York, I came here. Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, I, and, you know, speaking about, you know, appropriateness of garments for the climate, I used to wear, I used to make these scrap scarves that, uh, that were like really, really colorful. And I would, uh, you know, in the winter in New York, Oh yeah, perfectly appropriate, and I would get so many compliments on them in the grocery store. Yeah, I haven't worn a scarf since I've been in North Carolina, mm -hmm. coastal North Carolina. I mean, if I were in the mountains of North Carolina, I would still need them. But uh, I, it's it's kind of why I gravitated more, have started to gravitate more to wanting to do shawls because, we're, at least where we are, because we're close enough to the to the the water that in the winter, it's not heavy sweater weather, but, you know, it, it gets cool enough that you could, you know, you could throw a shawl on or, and I, I still, you know, in the morning when I'm out walking the dogs or whatever, we'll throw on like a light knit, not a heavy bulky knit cap, but like a, you know, a fingering weight knit cap is great. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, that's why I think I've, I've kind of shifted my focus a little more to, to trying to do some, some, some shawl knitting um, just because we don't have about all my scarves and hat, you know, all my scarves and heavy hats and heavy coats are in those, you know, Ziploc, uh vacuum bags in the in the garage for if we ever get to you know get back to new york and be in the winter but um, so is that what happens to most of the things that you create they just most, go into storage or you, you get them or i'm a big i'm a big gift knitter almost I'm, and almost everything i've knit gets gets given away so i'm working right now um on where we are planning a trip and to visit two two families and so i'm knitting everyone hats so this is one of the, the patterns. So oh, I think I've seen pictures of that on your one, Instagram. One yeah. family, uh, and then the other the other family is getting uh, this one. Um, so, I like that too. Yeah. So I, I so I do end up tending tending to give away much of uh, much of what I knit because it's going to um, you know folks that live in colder climes, um, and I also you know we have a fair number of. Uh, Friends, you know, we have sort of one set of friends that all their kids are sort of moving up through high school and graduating. So that's going to be a great, you know, blanket uh, gift pipeline. And then we have a um, kind of a wave of our of our gay friends who have just had babies in the last, you know, four or five years. And so there's sort of this little baby boom that's that's happened, which has been great because it gets to knit like knitted toys mm -hmm. and uh, you know yeah. little stuff like that. So that's been cool. Exactly. Uh, I love. Um... Hoping to, I, hoping to do more knitting for myself uh, this this next year. So, so what would you like to make more for yourself? I mean, I think that the so once I finish, I have ten of these hats to get done, and uh, a couple of little stuffed uh, stuffed animals. I think the next, I I just I, I just told my husband this morning. I said, you know, I think the next project I start, I want it to be for me, 
And I made, did my first Stephen West shawl last year. And I kept that for myself. It was a kit I brought, bought from my local yarn store, um, which is the Knitting Tree LA, which is an amazing um, yarn store here in LA. And she had put together kits for one of the those things. So I did that. But I think another shawl, um, you know, for myself before, as we, as we sort of head towards uh, winter and maybe, um, maybe not one of the super involved Stephen West ones, but um, maybe one of the more sort of simple ones. I, I just learned, um, I took a brioche class. And so I just started learning brioche knitting. Um, so maybe moving beyond a hat and doing, doing a, a shawl that has some brioche in it would be. Uh, mm, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. I always think let them eat brioche. <laughs> but, um... It was, it's great because, you know, I'd, I'd always, I'd seen pictures of it. And it looks so because it you know it kind of looks like that fisherman's rib. So I, I I expected it to be this really dense, heavy fabric, but it really makes this like kind of light puffy, um, kind of like brioche, kind of really light puffy fabric. Oh, nice. It's yeah. much much less dense than what I had imagined, and it's it's super tricky. Um, mistakes are very very hard, at least for me to to fix. So I do a, a fair amount of unknitting and reknitting, but. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, to learn a new technique. So. We'll mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, a lot of people I know, um, they actually do a substantial business selling their finished objects. I've never had any success with that. Have you ever tried it? I haven't, I've, no, I, I mean, I just don't, I just, I'd almost, I just rather give, just rather give them away. Now what I have done, um, and I made, try this as another sort of fundraising idea um, is I have for um, charity auctions and things here done sort of like a silent auction of like a commission piece. So I'll donate, say, I will, I will help you, you know, design a hat and I will knit you a hat, you know, to raise money for, the, for this charity. So what I may, I have a kit from, um, it's actually, actually from Knit Picks, um, that for uh it's an afghan it's called the oh color shift color shift thing is sort of a prismatic um kind of fade mm -hmm. um afghan kit and i was thinking about maybe i don't know if it'll happen for this year or maybe I'll, I'll save it for for next year but to, to go ahead and make that and then to run some sort of silent auction -y kind of thing to raise money for for the age right as well so but actually selling it I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Like I feel like it would take the uh, a little bit of the joy out of it. I mean, it's so much. I think part of the part of the joy is just doing it and sort of giving it to someone and and um, sort of adding a stress factor of having to get it done to you know to try to sell it would probably take a lot of the joy out of it. And um, yeah, for me, it's the worst thing is just being insulted by people who don't think that it's it's worth what it's worth. Right. Yeah. No, it's true. The uh, I, even if it's cheap yarn, it's uh, I when I was a technology consultant, I was making sixty five dollars an hour at, at, the, at best. If I were to charge that kind of rate for some of the stuff that I make, no one would ever pay for it. They they want stuff at less than minimum wage. Right. Right. For. No, um, true. And, you know, that I, I get sort of ornery about this subject because people just devalue the amount of time, the amount of skill and talent that it takes. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, I agree. I think, I think it, it almost, it's just not worth having that sort of that battle every time you want to do something. And, it, you know, I'd rather, you know, make something I loved making for someone that I love and just have that be the... Exactly. Easy. So. And especially if it's like yarn from someone you know, I have a piece of, well, it's no longer in this room, but um, I got some hand dyed yarn from a friend of mine. Um, and I made, um, I mean, all of the, anything that I make with that yarn is not leaving my hands. <laughs> so the first thing that I made is, um, it's going to serve as a scarf. It's sort of a, a a little bit sort of like a boomerang shawl it's it's if if people want to it's on my ravelry and on instagram as the alicia shawl okay. but um and in fact 
there are pictures of the piece itself. It's it's in the pink, uh, the, the red and pink yarn. But I look at that and I see my friend Daniel who did the hand dyeing. Mm -hmm. And so like that, it's like a child that Daniel and I had. Right. So it's not leaving my hands. Right. I mean, as people say I have a crush on Ben, and I don't know why. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, I, know. Long. <laughs> I, can, I know. I know. I can, I can, I can definitely, uh, you know, I can see how I part of, I mean, part of the, with, with, with the yarn, part of the fun for me is, you know, I'll, I'll see these, these yarns and is, is coming up with the project. So I have all of these little Ziploc bags with kits already made of yarn that I picked out. I picked out the pattern. I mean, it probably would be another seven years worth of knitting that I have already pre-made into these little, little kits. And, and there's, I don't know that I just find that so much fun. I mean, the knitting it, knitting it up will be a whole nother, you know, a, a whole nother, uh, uh, thing to enjoy, but just sort of finding the, the yarns that go together and finding the pattern that kind of works with those yarns is, is sort of a, a fun thing to do just on, a, on its own for me. So, so, Generally speaking, are you yarn first or pattern first? I would say I'm probably yarn first. Uh, I mean, sometimes it can, you know, usually that's that's the way it has worked so far. Um, I think that now as I've accumulated a fair amount of, of yarn, um, I'm a little bit, a little, the problem is oftentimes, you know, I, I have never bought, usually don't buy much more than a single skein of, of something. Um, and so if I do end up finding a pattern, then it usually becomes, then I have to go out and buy the, you know, try to buy the yarn or, or dig through the stash and try to put, put some things together. But occasionally it will happen that way, but more often than, than not, I'll find a yarn that I love or I'll see, you know, two and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to try to put these two or three things together. Then I'll go to Ravelry and say, find me a shawl pattern that requires, you know, three different colors in an X yardage of fingering out yarn. And then I'll see what pops up and then kind of go through, okay, that one would work with these yarns or, or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, but I, I do, I, I do love the process. I do love that process of sort of, um, you know, and maybe that's the gateway drug to designing. I don't know where <laughs> you're sort of like, at some point you're like, okay, I have this great yarn and I'm not seeing anything. I, you know, particularly grabs me, let me see what I can do. And I, I do I do think, you know, maybe somewhere down the road, once I have a little more mileage under my belt in terms of actually knitting shawl patterns and kind of getting an understanding of how th they're structured and, and the elements kind of go together, I could see that. I could see that happening. Yeah. So. I've um, actually, I got started designing with a, a, a hat pattern. Um, and I wound up, making a lot of changes. And in the end, it was more my changes than the original pattern. So I just wrote up a, a new pattern that was all in the, you know, the, the, the whatever change that I had made. And so that was my first pattern that I did. And a lot of the people, I was fairly new to the YouTube yarn community mm -hmm. uh, or the YouTube crochet community at the time had just started my channel and I put it out there and a lot of people just loved it. So it was, uh, it was great fun. It's a bit of a yarn eater and it's, um, but I think it's, I still think it's a good pattern. And, yeah. Um, I just finished a hat not hate project, so I'm a, a bit hatted out. Yep. For now. Uh, although I just made this one, I think I think I made it yesterday. Oh this wow. This is. Um, uh, do you know Crystal Bagaday? Um, no. She has a very 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 big um, crochet channel. Okay. Anyway, this is one of her designs, and uh, she. As Bagaday, she's known as Bod. So some people are doing a Bod along, okay. where uh, like you you do one of her patterns exactly as written, and then you um, uh, a a random winner will be selected from people who send in pictures of of things. 
I love the texture of that. Yeah, that is great. The, the way it worked out. And, you know, I was totally bored doing it. That <laughs> worked out great. Don't tell well, that's, why, that's why hats are, that's that's why I, I do love hats is because even if you're like sort of like not loving the pattern, you don't have too much more to go. You're like in a hat, you just never have too much more to go. <laughs> exactly. Especially, especially with the like the, the the ones the the last three of this one are all kids sizes. So I, I'm like you know I just really don't have that much more. And I do I do actually really enjoy that. This is a great. Um, this is a uh, Hunter Hammerson. It's called. Um, Exigen exigencies um and it's a it's a great um it looks a lot more complicated than it is with the with the color, the slip stitches and it's just a really great mindless oh cool yeah but like you know they're little they're little and they'll take no no time now when you get on one of these shawls that like starts at the point and gets out to you know expands as it goes and you get to the two-thirds point and if you're not enjoying that then you're like oh each row is getting Longer, longer, and longer, and longer. Um, the, yeah, the, the the design that I'm doing right now, um, it's it's the actual method. It's like it's it's really easy, but it looks like it isn't. Oh well, yeah. Um, which is my specialty, actually. <laughs> really easy, but looks like it isn't. Um, I love. Bang, bang for your buck patterns where it looks like it's, you know, very, very complicated, but it's, you know, in, in knitting, it's like these slip stitch patterns that have multiple colors. It just looks like you're doing a lot of work, but it's really quite, quite easy. Yeah. But the thing about this is um, I have written up the pattern already. Oh. I have the pattern complete, but this design sample is taking forever because it's very long. It's going to be a wrap, okay. you know, like a large... An oversized, very, very oversized scarf. Um, right. Although you could do it as a scarf. I, I make that clear on the pattern. But it's very long rows of single crochet and chain. Okay. So it takes forever. Yeah. So, but I love this yarn, actually. Um, this is some cheap yarn, actually. Uh, it wow. feels nice. And it's, um, it's Lion Brand Summer Nights. Okay. Which is a one weight yarn. Uh, I'm talking about myself too much. Stop no, me when no, I do no. that. <laughs> it, anyway, it, 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 it looks like it has like some like halo to it. Is it? No, there's there's no real it? halo to it, but there is some sparkle. Okay. Um, I don't like halo actually. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind knitting it. I hate unknitting like anything that has like. Buzz, but if you make a mistake, frogging that stuff is <laughs> a nightmare. I mean, I have a couple of, of abandoned projects that I started with yarn that I just I didn't want to move forward, and I couldn't move backward because frogging it was a nightmare. So they're like stalled. Yeah, they're There's like so in many, a Ziploc bag. So many of the so many of the the patterns, and I love the way they look. You know call for or you know suggest that you like hold a strand of mohair with a strand of fingering um and, I, and so i bought some and i've just never been brave enough to to do it yet because i'm just dreading the frogging when it when it inevitably mm. when i make the mistake but it looks so great when it you know when it's when it's um you know max and, and vincent have um some beautiful like mohair stuff and they you know they hold it hold it double it just looks it looks great um but Someday I'll, I'll I'll brave it, but I haven't I haven't done that yet. Have Have you done any double stranding? Yes, yes. Um, in fact, um, one of the the blanket I made this year for the graduate uh, was you kind of created your own fade by holding three. You had three colors, and you held, held three stamps together, so it was all the same color. Then you swapped one out and then you swap two out and then you kind of transitioned to the to the, the third color so you kind mm -hmm. of create this ombre fade so I, i've done some of that um i've never oh and actually on on this uh not this one but this this purple yarn here at the bottom um this was a a set of uh, this yarn called Wyndham from uh modern daily knitting um the old mason dixon knitting uh women um, had put this 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 kit kind of together, but I was trying to make more than one, and I ran out of this purple. So I held together um, 
uh, a different purple and a and a sort of lighter color to try to mimic it in the in the in the second and third ones that I did. But but haven't done other than that much much holding together. So yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing that I ever did was a a, a blanket or a throw that was double stranded, sometimes triple, where I have learned from um, one of the uh, YouTubers that I follow very, very closely, uh, where you can do it with, it, even if you have a stash with all different weights and, and anything, as long as you keep like a consistent strand of, of something else. Like mm. if you have a strand of like, even if it's one of those awful store brand yarns, but you pair it up with um, whatever other yarn you have and just um, uh, and then the the store brand yarn is going to be yards and yards and yards and then if you only have a few yards uh, or maybe 20 or 30 yards of of this yarn and then maybe 40 yards of the next yarn and then maybe 10 yards of the next one and they might be different weights but as long as you have that one that is consistent you can make a really nice scrap gown that way yeah yeah, I like I like I like I like these um, uh, a lot of these scrappy these scrappy projects. Are really, really, yeah, fun. yeah. I I used to love doing that with the with a waffle stitch scarf because I can do those in my sleep. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, there was something else I was going to ask you, and it's escaped me completely. But you know, we've been talking for so long, oh. but um. <laughs> Been great fun it has it has so um i i want to thank you so much Absolutely. please 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 send me any pictures you want me to include any links you want me to include um if you have any social media presence outside of instagram that i don't know about i would love to to uh, uh not really but uh, um but i will but absolutely uh i will and i i um appreciate the offer and i will Definitely want to continue this conversation about um, getting you involved in the the, the make alongs for the for the ace life cycle. That would be fantastic. Well, just hang on after I stop recording and we'll okay. keep talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, I want to thank everybody who has been uh, watching us all this long, long, long time. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have because we really have. And. Um, I, as always, uh, watch our uh, like, subscribe, comment, share all the standard YouTube crap, and um, keep coming back. And bye bye now.